All right, I think we can start. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I welcome you uh, from wherever you're joining us from. As you can see on your screen, uh, we are going to have the passing strategy for financial accounting, which is paper one of the certified public accountants uh, examination. Uh, for those intending to see it, the June 2022 examination. So I welcome you all. Uh, I want you to ensure that you have a pen and uh, paper or your notebook where you're going to uh, put down very, very key um, points that we are going to put across. In this session, my name is a CPA Innocent Mugisha from Harvest Training and Consultancy. Uh, one of the approved tuition providers for the certified uh, public accountants of Uganda course. Uh, we've been doing this for some good years. Uh, and of course, uh, as one of uh, the very, very uh, important sessions that we take our students through is the passing strategy. So the passing strategy, uh, we usually do it towards the examinations as we try to prepare our students for this very, very exciting examination. So um, for key, key things, uh, we need to look at the session of, uh, session overview, what exactly we are going to discuss uh, in this uh, session. One, we are going to look at the structure of the financial accounting uh, examination. Uh, the examination structure. We are going to look at the uh, expectations by the examiner. Okay, the expectation of the examiner from you, the candidate who's going to sit this examination. Uh, the level of assessment. We are going to look at that as well. Uh, and of course, we are going to look at the remarks uh, from the examiner, what you're supposed to do, and some of the causes of failure. We are looking at the risk uh, here and the risk is ideally failing the examination. So for you to reduce on the risk or to do away with the risk, you need to understand uh, what has been making uh, students fail this paper and known to excel in this examination. So uh, without wasting uh, any more of your time, we shall move into the examination structure. So the financial accounting examination is a three hour and 15 minutes examination comprising of six questions, uh, each carrying 20 marks. The examination contains two sections and that is section A and B. Section A is compulsory and contains 20 multiple choice questions. Each of these carries one mark. Section B comprises of uh, the remaining five questions. As I've mentioned, these are uh, six questions in the examination. So section B carries the balance of the five questions and you're required to attempt only four out of those five uh, questions in section B. The section B has the remaining five questions. Section B has the remaining five questions. And out of the five, please, please, please select four that you feel you are able to do and score highly. Out of the five, select four. So that is the structure of the exam. That is the structure of our examination. Now, what are the expectations? As the examiner sets uh, the six questions, he's testing one, two, three things. One is your ability to explain the role of accounting and accountants. Can you cite five roles of accountants, especially the professional one? Are you able to describe the financial reporting framework in Uganda? As you are preparing financial statements, what is the framework that guides us as accountants? 
So expect questions on the financial reporting framework. Qualitative characteristics of financial information. Are you able to cite some of these? Okay. Are you able to give some of the qualitative? Remember, some of you are coming from the university where you have been giving a list of characteristics. Understandability, completeness, uh, reliability, smartness, ability. So you would give very many characteristics. But here, when we are doing the professional course, they are particular qualitative characteristics. The examiner is going to examine you on your clear understanding of the different forms of business organizations. Okay. Of course, you've uh, from your earlier uh, studies, you could have come across several of those. But here we are saying we have mainly uh, three. That is the sole proprietorship, partnerships, and company. The rest are just uh, derivatives of the three. So, as you walk into the examination room, as you take that seat, are you able to give clear explanations of the three? Are you able to give the advantages, disadvantages of the different forms? So, that is what you expected to deliver in the examination. Number five, you expected to have the ability to record transactions in books of prime entry, uh, like the sales day book, the purchases day book, the cash book, and the ledgers. As you are preparing the ledgers and, uh, and accounts, are you able to apply correctly the principle of double entry bookkeeping? Six, the examiner will examine your ability to prepare a trial balance and correct any errors that could be committed by the accountant. You may not prepare a trial balance per se, but are you able to read? Are you able to read correctly the elements of the trial balance? Are you able to tell what is on the debit? What is on the credit? What should we expect to be on the debit? What should we expect to be on the credit of the trial balance? Six, seven, sorry. The examiner will examine your ability to prepare financial records for business organizations, uh, including manufacturing concerns, non-profit making organizations which some of you call NGOs mm. partnerships sole proprietorship company as you walk into that examination room are you able to prepare and present the manufacturing account mm. are you able to prepare the statement of affairs for the non-profit making organization? Are you able to dissolve a partnership in the books? Mm -hmm. I ask yourself, the examiner will go ahead to test your understanding of reconciliation. In accounting, we do a lot of reconciliations, reconciliation for the bank, reconciliation for the customer's accounts, reconciliation for the supply accounts. Are you able to conduct an accurate reconciliation? Mm -hmm. Number nine, the examiner expects you as a candidate to have the ability to prepare accounts and financial statements from incomplete records. The examiner 
is going to test your ability to prepare accounts for a company for sole trade that has lost its records the records are destroyed the owner is making drawings now and again and does not know how much has been drawn are you able to prepare the financial statements the examiner will also test your appreciation and application of selected international accounting standards selected international financial reporting standards please do not read all of them limit yourself to international accounting standard 7 that deals with the statement of cash flows international accounting standard 2 that handles the accounting of inventories and this one which never misses international accounting standard 16 that handles property plant and equipment so there you are so how are we going to be assessed the examiner or the examination is going to set in such a way that you're going to be tested in terms of the knowledge the skill and comprehension here we are looking at the principles relating to double entry bookkeeping and the preparation of financial statements for example let's take an example of bank reconciliation the examination will test your knowledge of bank reconciliation so it means that as you are looking at that area you should know what is bank reconciliation you can explain to a layman what is bank reconciliation two the skill are you able to reconcile do you know what it takes to reconcile can you produce a report regarding the reconciliation? That's the skill now. Hands-on. Comprehension. If you have been presented with a scenario, you see these questions of bank reconciliation come with errors. If errors have been committed, if you have a dishonored check, if you have um, unpresented checks, if you have standing orders, are you able to look at the scenario and then identify those key items are you able to treat them in your reconciliation so that is the knowledge skill and comprehension mm -hmm. so during the examination during the examination what are you expected to do? One, you're not expected to write in the first 15 minutes. You're not expected to write in the first 15 minutes. The first 15 minutes have been provided or availed to you to settle in and lay your passing strategy. You look at the questions that have been set, rank them, in the order of how you are going to present them to the examiner i continue by saying that it is not a must that you must start with question one followed by question two followed by question three that means please don't go with it in the examination you can actually start with question six you go to question two you go to question three as long as you indicate the question number as long as you indicate the question number attempted at the beginning of the answer page okay at the beginning of each answer on a fresh page as long as you indicate the question no problem you can start with question number six if it's the good one for you followed by question number two like that read the instructions carefully make good choice of questions 
to be attempted. Yes, they could bring a number of errors, but they don't require you to prepare the suspense account. And now because you've already detected this number is on errors, you have selected it, yet the examiner wants you to prepare a corrected statement of financial position. So you must be careful. Read the, question, read the instructions carefully and then make choice of the questions we are going to attempt. And of course, as I've been telling you now and again, start with the easy questions and earn the easy marks. Don't prove a point. You are not competing with anybody. You're not competing with a, you're not competing with me. You're not competing with your neighbor. We all have different objectives. We all have different end goals. We belong to different clans. So you're not competing with anybody to start with a hard question. As I told you last time, some people are hard by nature. So say for me, I am hard. I begin with the hard questions. So please, passing strategy, start with the easy questions and earn the easy marks. Be mindful of the time. Time is part of the exam. Now, a quick formula for you. Ensure that you spend 36 minutes per question. Given the fact that you have five questions to attempt over the three hours, the correct utilization of time is 36 minutes per question. Are the wall clocks provided? Yes, as you can see on your screen, in that examination room, the wall clock is actually displayed. The wall clock is going to, be, it's going to be displayed in a space that is visible to all of you. Okay? So, time, time, time yourself. As I've mentioned, indicate the question number attempted at the beginning of each answer on a fresh page. Do not attempt extra questions. Any excess question is not going to be marked. Shall thank you for being very hardworking, but the question that is extra is not going to be marked. Understand the requirements of each question so as to avoid preparing for what is not required for. Like in March 2022, people prepared the suspense account, yet it was actually not required. It must have been a March or some sitting, just a recent one. Hmm? People prepared the suspense account, yet it was not required. Appreciate end of year adjustments before the preparation of the financial statements. Don't ignore these. Number nine, comprehend generalizing of transactions. And most importantly, understanding the impact of each additional journal entry on the financial statements. Very, very important. That additional information that you're given, you must generalize it. You must show the debit and credit effect of that transaction on the financial statements. In that way, you're going to be able to produce financial statements that are actually balancing. Okay. Apply the correct format of the financial statements for the entity in question. What are you handling? Are you handling a manufacturing concern? Are you handling a company? Are you handling a partnership? Right now, I've given you all the formats. All the formats, you have them. Please do not mix up the formats. Next are the causes of failure. Causes of failure. The very first cause is not paying attention to detail. Not paying attention to detail. For example, the question could say depreciation is to be charged on cost. Mm? Then you find yourself charging depreciation or the depreciation rate on the net book value. So you must pay attention to detail. 
rules of double entry known to well conceptualized. Of course, you know this paper is filled with double entry. So go back to that uh, part and ensure that you have clearly understood the rules of double entry. Use of incorrect formats. Use of incorrect formats uh, has been uh, one of the largest causes of failure. Ignoring the theoretical aspects of each topic. Some of you I know you are mathematicians. You like numbers. So you tend to ignore the theory. Please, please, please ensure that you capture the theory for each of the topics that we are going to highlight. Okay? That we are going to highlight. Failure to make necessary adjustments arising out of additional information provided. I've always told you, please, before you start the preparation of the financial statements, first sort out the additional information. First sort out the additional information. Otherwise, you will be making a very big mistake starting with the preparation of the financial statements without clearly sorting out the additional information. Some of you are very good at English and you can never fail to explain anything in English. When you come to financial accounting, your English may not save you all that much. We are looking at the technical terms. We want you to use the technical terms rather than the English language usage of some of those accounting concepts. Opening accounts and you fail to post opening balances. In most cases, this is caused by the um, rush and panic. And please, you know the first one. Calm down. Okay, calm down. Open the account. If the account is a balance sheet account, it must have an opening balance. Accounts like the cash book, accounts like trade receivables. Accounts like, like trade payables, non-current uh, accounts are all expected to have opening balances. So ensure that you indicate the opening balance. That's the first thing. What is my opening balance? So the examiners observed that over time, people open accounts and forget to post the opening balances. Lack of knowledge of the relevant accounts to be opened as per the requirement of the question. Some of these candidates actually do not know which account should I prepare. Should I prepare the land account, bad debts account, capital account? Which account? They don't know. Posting accounts to the general ledger instead of individual Actually, this is posting transactions. Posting transactions to the general ledger instead of the individual accounts. Up to now, some candidates don't know the difference between the general ledger and the individual accounts. Overlooking the max allocated per question. Someone is sweating for hours and hours for two max. And then rushes a question with 14 marks. Mm? Please stop that. Stop those things. Poor choice of questions. Not managing time, thus attempting less questions or partially attempted questions. Not appreciating the basics of accounting profession. It's, a, it's really absurd that some people don't know. Eh? The advantages of hiring a professional accountant. Lack of a deep understanding of the different ledger accounts, including cash sales and cash receipts in the receivables and payables contra account. How can you do that? You know that contra accounts are only for credit, credit purchases, credit sales, credit transactions. So people include cash sales cash purchases mm, in these contra accounts. Insufficient knowledge of dealing with gross margin and markup. Mm, some people do, the, do this the other way around. 
instead of margin they give markup instead of markup they give margin so i hope you don't uh, bring back such confusion failure to identify an example of an account that is impersonal from the information that is provided the examiner can say prepare the impersonal account hmm? not appreciating treatment of prepaid and accrued incomes and their presentation in the financial statements uh, indicating drawings as expenses which is conceptually wrong i don't know why please stop those things drawings are not expenses members drawings are not expenses stop doing those things lack of clear understanding of how information derived from the workings fits into the financial statements required by the examiner can you imagine that someone does the workings very well but fails to transfer that information or forgets to transfer that information to the final statements or the financial statements that are required by the question failure to appreciate accounting standards failure to determine profit for the year using the business accounting equation i'm bringing this one last why because it is a problem and remains a problem and continues to be a problem that's the spirit we shall pray for it so if you have not seen the business accounting equation please as you're walking into that examination room ensure that you look at the business equation so that is our discussion and i believe that's the first part of my presentation the examination structure the examiner's expectations the level of assessment what you should do during the examination causes of failure I hope you have taken note of uh, what we have discussed in the first session. So in our second session, we are going to look at the examiner's remarks. This is a very, very important session, uh, based on the fact that I'm going to highlight some of the pitfalls uh, that have uh, caused very many candidates problems. And of course, I'm going to guide you on how to do in order to avoid uh, such pitfalls. So I want you to go, to go to the next lecture video that handles our second session, which delves into the examiner's uh, remarks. Thank you.